Just as a kind of cool way to supplement this video, guys, I included a link in the description of a really sick, and I guess a little bit kind of weird if you compare it to what the actual content of this video is, video, a really sick song specifically, that uh, would supplement this video really well. So I'll give you guys a couple seconds, you know, just go over the description, click the link, listen to it. You know, for anybody who's actually curious what it is, it's um, this one YouTuber who does heavy metal music renditions of popular video game or uh, pop culture songs and uh, this one is specifically vampire killer from the very very beloved and specifically for me myself and i series from video games called castlevania so if you guys want to go turn that on i'll give you guys a couple seconds just go down to the description you know, just click the link and pop it on it's i mean realistically you probably have to play it like five or six times my videos usually average around 25 minutes to about half an hour again another disclaimer guys as usual my deck build is in the description if you guys do not enjoy my ramblings and ravings of a madman please by all by all means go down there check it out be like, yep, you know what? I've seen this deck build before. I've seen this before. Oh, that's a new way of doing things. Oh, that's absolute crap. Just go check it out. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next introduction to my video where you will also get this uh, little, hey, check out the description. Here's the deck build. Enjoy. Spiel. All right. Now that you guys have that absolutely bitchin' song and going on in the background, and hopefully you can still hear my voice because that song is... I don't know, just like, I listen, that's my alarm in the morning, like, that thing just gets me going, it makes me want to go, like, back to Transylvania and freaking fight actual vampires, it's pretty sick. This deck, guys, and it was weird because, um, like I mentioned when I was making another deck, the Rhea deck that I built, uh, one of the viewers that I have for my channel, or I don't know if he's a regular viewer or not, but he left a comment and said, hey, you know what, there's a lot of these cards that would be way better in a Makagi deck. So I was like, you know what, you're totally right. And I tried building a Makagi deck that was decently similar to my Rhea build. But then I was like, what's the point? Like, all I could do is just go back onto the video, go into the description and be like, hey, by the way, change like three cards, add Makage as the ruler, and you've essentially got your a, a good chunk of your sideboard already made for you. So instead of doing that, instead of going off of the white black build that I did for my Rhea deck, what I instead did is a little bit different. It's a different playstyle, but uh, it's a build, it's a modern build. Actually, I think it's been almost a year now, because I think the second video I ever did on this channel for Force of Will was my Makagi build for Christmas. So I guess this is kind of like that weird void zone of Christmas music, but not yet Christmas time between like November and the 25th of December. So. Anyway, the deck build is in fact still white and black. I didn't want to get into three colors like I've been doing with a lot of my decks recently. But instead of it being mystery counters and adding that whole hullabaloo into the, the stones and making it a big mess, I kept it just white black, and I'll go over the stones in a sec, and I decided to make it a tribal vampires deck. And like I was saying, because I didn't want to do the Rhea deck again, I went onto YouTube and looked for inspiration, right? Like, I, I don't like plagiarizing off of people, but I wanted to grab at straws here. I wanted to see, like, okay, what are the most recent deck builds? And I actually went into my settings. I put it by most recent video to oldest or whatever, and I just looked up Makaki deck build. And again, like, it's... I don't know if it's my personal inspiration to go back to the beginning of a lapis cluster with all of the rulers that were released in their decks and I just did the Nyarlathotep deck. Uh, I guess now it's going to be a few weeks from when I record this video and I plan on making a new Feath Sing deck as well. I never owned um, the um, Mercury deck so I don't think I'll ever be making that uh, and I actually am thinking of making a mixed color, um, what is it, fairy tale deck with uh, Milliam from that particular set released as well, just because I really love that Grim, uh, the Grim, the, the pitch black vampire, or whatever that's um, part fairy tale, part vampire. So I want to make a deck around that. But I went on to YouTube, and it might be just because people don't really care about those rulers anymore because they're going to get rotated as soon as this set ends, which is nowhere near done yet. Damn it, dog, shut up! <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear my dog. He's, he's going nuts. Uh, he can't get into this room, so he's probably going like, man, where's where's Master Fiji's voice coming from? Anyway, so I went up to YouTube. This is like the third time I'm starting this 
this tangent. And I noticed that there hasn't really been too much love for Makagi in terms of, of video content creation recently. So, I mean, not to, to bust on any of my fellow fowers on YouTube, but like, it's been mostly Wanderer format. I don't know, I guess like Makagi is decently good if you throw in some old Wanderer stuff. And I've seen some stuff with uh, like um, spinning myths and stuff like that. And I've seen them with multicolors. And of course, back when it was still in rotation, Makagi was actually really good for pretty much like a one turn swing and kill with Regalia. And you know, like, you know, my hashtag hate Regalia uh, stance on that sort of thing. But anyway, so unfortunately, I was left high and dry, even with a little bit of research. And again, not to float my own boat too much here, but like, I, you know, like, I, I had to make this thing from scratch by myself. And I mean, it doesn't have anything crazy controversial in terms of new, like, oh, never before seen combinations or anything like that, like what I'm used to doing with Dayman, who, by the way, I am happy to say will be back as of a week or so after the release of the new set. So at least in terms of making new decks with Dayman back in the videos, you guys can totally look forward to that. Anyway, so, you know, long story short, this is a tribal Makagi deck, white, black, and it's it's 100% Fija. It's 100% Fija. Okay, guys. And another awesome little thing. I don't know if you guys really care, but since I am doing this in the waiting hours of a beautiful evening in Western Canada here, you guys won't have to worry about that stupid glare from my uh, fluorescent lights. So let's get right into it. So this is Ally of the Black Moon. He's got Judgment for three, which is a little bit high for the kind of judgment that I like to have on my rulers, but whatever. Energize and the activated ability. So this kind of gets shut down if people are running both uh, Neo Shadow Barrier and the new Dark Alice Which is pay one darkness and this card deals 100 damage to target resonator put a blood counter on this card The blood counters come into effect on his J ruler side Which is awesome because he's wanderer on the ruler side but vampire on the J ruler side Which will be important for a card. I'm going to show you guys later and on this side. He is called a eternal vampire Mikage Saijiro. He is a 9-9, which unfortunately by the standards of the newest rulers and the rulers that will probably by the time of the posting of this video be released for Advent of the Demon King, unfortunately is a little bit underwhelming. But he does have Imperishable and Flying. And as far as I could remember, I don't think there's been any rulers, or like J ruler side, not like, for instance, the third flip side of uh, Gilahomet's card, but there hasn't been any rulers with built-in Imperishable. They've always had to have other cards do it. And there actually aren't that many cards currently in rotation that give it that aren't specific to one ruler, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, so he's got Flying and Imperishable and the following ability, which uses the blood counters you've accumulated on his ruler side, hopefully. Remove a blood counter from this card, choose one, target J slash Resonator gains minus 100, 100 until the end of turn. That would have been cool if they eroded that to make it a 100, 100 counter instead of 100, 100 till the end of turn. But again, this dude's going to be rotated in a year or so, so I don't think that they're going to be doing that this late in the game. No pun intended. And he's also got, or this card gains plus 200, plus zero until the end of turn, which is awesome for back in the one turn swing kind of days with your uh that one card i really hated oh what was it named i've already like made a tab in my own brain the demon sword Laviton. Laviton. yeah when you had Laviton. i mean realistically if i wanted to put in a third color in this like specifically to make the deck more ruler centric instead of resonator centric i could put in the sprinting flame horse but i've been making making too many ruler centric decks so i didn't really want to do that here and then finally, or gain 200. Um, or I'll put a 1-1 one -one counter on target Vampire Resonator. Um, again, that would have been cool if it was... Actually, no, because he gets plus 200 plus 0. Never mind, yeah. So, okie dokes. The deck, from like its onset, I believe, should have been... Um, you know, a vampire tribal, and unfortunately back at the beginning of Lapis Cluster, there wasn't too much to work with. And as you guys know, I'm not a big fan of the one drop Makage sister, just because she's like super slow and I don't like the fact that she can't attack without a 1-1 one -one counter. But, you know, whatever, that's neither here nor there. Okay guys, going into the one drops, I run three of the Servant of Makage. 300-300, uh, Vampire Resonator, super important, obviously, because it's a Vampire Tribal deck. But uh, when this card enters the field, put a 1-1 counter on target Resonator, including himself. 
If your opponent controls a special magic stone, put two 1-1 counters on that resonator instead. So if you have the option of playing this dude first turn or second turn and you're going first so your opponent hasn't played any stones yet, wait for the second turn if you want to get that additional buff. Or, I mean, again, it's just by luck of the roll of the dice, you could just go second and also get the energize. So you really get nothing but, but awesome bonuses for going second with this deck. Uh, another card from the actual, um, what is it, Milliam's starter deck, and I just bought that recently, just specifically for Manifestation of Power, which unfortunately I'm usually against, guys, like, it's a card game, have fun with it, but don't waste like 30 bucks or 40 bucks like I did from my local store to buy a deck for specifically one card, but luckily, in this particular case, I get to use more than just the one card, so, but yeah, you know, like, Moderation, guys. You know, it's just it's just a pastime. You don't have to be super serious about this. Just have fun with it. But you know, whatever. I'm just some guy on the internet. You don't have to listen to what I say. Anyway, I run three of Magic Sweets. It's a quick cast chant. And actually, another fun little thing. And this I just noticed this recently, which is kind of embarrassing since it's like coming up on the second year that I've been playing this game now. I just realized that any card that is quick cast in the arts of the card, they've got little lightning bolts around the the like total cost of the card. And that's, that's like amazing, because I never realized that. Anyway, so it's a, a quick cast, one drop white chance with the following ability. Target J slash Resonator, which is super important because you can totally use this on Makage. You control gains plus 200, plus 200, and barrier until the end of turn. And then it just goes into a bit of an explanation of what barrier means. Because I can't remember, guys, maybe you can remind me, this, remind me of this in the, uh, the comment section, but I think that, uh, I think the barrier was something that they brought out in Lapis Cluster. Like, I know that they they had it in, like, lesser, or in more words, it would be like, oh, can't be the target of such and such, but they didn't actually give it, like, one of those, like, little white outline actual, like, abilities. Anyway, oh, look at that. Master Feature is making a deck that's got Idol of Willpower in it. What a massive surprise. Idol of Willpower. Literally one of my favorite cards from Ancient Knights. I pretty much put it into every deck because it makes for those awesome first turn plays or those odd number mana plays or will, or whatever you want to call it, or those turns where you want to be able to kind of like psych out your opponent, uh, thinking that you've got like a one drop or a two drop um, cancel. Like for instance, that uh, card, that green card with the Elf King or whatever that cancels quick, quick cast spells. And then you're like, nope, just kidding. And then during your opponent's turn when they're in their end phase, you're like, boop, pop one into this, draw my card, gain 500, and then draw my card for turn when it switches over. Anyway, so it has um, is an, uh, an addition for a one drop of any color and has the ability to uh, pay one into this and banish this card. You gain 500 life and you draw a card. So it works well into the draw mechanics of this deck just because traditionally black hasn't been very good with it. And on top of that, I do not have the blood spray that has become kind of a staple of drawing in darkness decks because... I didn't want to complicate the stone deck with mystery counter stones. Alrighty. Um, yeah, lethal arrow. Everybody knows what it does now. It's a one drop quick cast chant for one darkness target, uh, destroy target damaged resonator. It is the darkness equivalent of demon flame, and I've seen Makagi decks that run both a playset of these and a playset of demon flame, but personally, I think that's a little excessive. I think in terms of how much like control specifically field i mean you can do hand control too if you want but i didn't in this deck uh, in terms of specifically field control for additions and resonators you don't need that much oppression makagi's pretty good for it i run two of the dreams of flights another classic staple light card from Lapis Cluster. I honestly, I'm going to have so many holes in my strategies once Lapis Cluster gets rotated. A lot of people were pretty, you know, like butthurt about the rotation of Alice, but since I came in like the last two sets of Alice block, I didn't care as much, but Lapis Cluster, oh my goodness, this is going to be brutal for me. Anyway, so Dreams of Flight, I mean, everybody should know what it does, but it, if you don't, it's a quick cast remnant card, which means you can cast it multiple times, once from hand to the field and then into the grave, and then once from grave and then it gets removed from the game. With Force Roll 1, I mean, we don't really care about the Force Roll because we're not doing anything to supplement the Force Roll, but it's a nice little addition. So, target J slash Resonator gains plus X plus X and Flying, that's the part we care about, until the end of turn where X is the result of the roll. So, 
I run two of these, but effectively with Revenant, as long as your opponent doesn't have Barrier of Light, you've got... Or is it Seal of Light? I think it's Barrier of Light. Anyway, that red-white one from... Uh, well, it's Damon's, Damon's deck. Anyway, so unless you've got something that's locking down the grave, you've essentially got four plays instead of just the two. Okie diddles. And this is the card that I... Uh, that I premonitioned earlier. So it is Manifestation of Power, a two-drop chant with quick cast. Again, look at the beautiful lightning bolts around the total cost there. Um, that's got uh, a one white and one colorless, and it has choose one, recover target uh, resonator you control, so it's not J's, just resonator, uh, and draw a card, and then it's got the semicolon or destroy target addition. Another errata, and I know I'm, I'm being super pretentious, you know, like, assuming how cards are supposed to be written and all that stuff, but I think one thing that would have made this card phenomenal, even more so than it already is, is if they had ma made it that the draw a card option was on both sides of the semicolon, right? Like, hey, untap a resonator and draw a card, or destroy target edition, draw a card. But, I don't know, maybe they thought that was a little too OP. So I run four of those manifestation of powers in the deck. I think up to this point we've gone over most of the light cards that I have in the deck, and that's why I don't have too much light coverage in my stone deck. Anyhow, I run three. I'm starting to sound like Dayman. Anyhow, okay, anyway. <laughs> so this is a quick cast um, called Power Absorption, and this is another one of the phenomenal cards, and I honestly, like, it's weird that they made it a common. And of course, like, the actual rarity definitions for cards that come out of pre-built starter decks don't really matter, up until Ancient Knights, I guess, where they changed it up anyway, like, they're not the same in the starter decks, the rarity um, denomination and the rarity denomination in the actual uh, booster boxes that came out. But I feel like even just out of pride for the cards that came out in that starter deck, this should have been an SR. This shouldn't have been a, a common. And definitely not an uncommon. Like, it should have been at least a rare or, or a super rare. Anyway, so Power Absorption has the following quick ass ability. This card deals 600 damage to target J slash Resonator. J slash Resonator, that's important. Uh, plus an additional 100 damage for each Vampire Resonator you control. Put a 1-1 counter on each Vampire you control. So essentially it's... A kill for a one or two drop, most likely, so like a early mid card, um, plus additional damage on top of it, so like almost a guaranteed kill for most two drops, or lower, and you get to buff all of your resonators. And considering this is a vampire tribal, you're gonna definitely be doing a lot more damage, and you're gonna definitely be getting a lot more uh, powered up on your field. And the cool part is, is that it just said vampires you control. It didn't say J slash resonators. And as far as I know, in terms of my knowledge of errata, that would also mean that on Makagi's flip side, on his J-Ruler side, he would also be getting a 1-1 counter. Okay, Phil, come on. Work with me here. Okay, I know that back when Dayman and I were making our, our decks for like the mid to late Lapis Cluster, I said that this card would be a staple in pretty much any deck that can run Darkness. It's kind of been replaced. It's kind of been replaced in Darkness decks in terms of being able to siphon through your deck and all that stuff with that uh, Blood Spray. But Blood Spray doesn't let you pinpoint as much as Faded Reunion. Like, Faded, Re Faded Reunion was the granddaddy, Big Mac daddy of, you know, like, tutors, essentially, for Force of Will, as far as I know. So, Faded Reunion, unfortunately, not Quick Cast, which I think was a blunder when this card was made. It had a lot more potential with Quick Cast, but tis what it is, my dudes and dudettes. It is a two-drop for one Darkness and one Colorless, that has the following ability. Choose one. If you control two or more Darkness J slash Resonators, you may choose both. Search your deck for a card, then shuffle the rest of your deck and put that card on top of it, or draw a card. So essentially, if you've got no Darkness or only one Darkness Resonator in the field, you can use it to draw a card. If you have two, you're, you're tutoring that card directly to hand instead of just on top of the deck. Which, I mean, if you guys have seen my, uh, I think, I, I can't remember if it was in the original, um, versus video that I had with my deck versus uh, Dayman's Gil Lapis uh, Rebel of Darkest Fires deck, or if it was in my Master Fiji's Tears kind of like uh, almost gauntlet run against our decks. Um, but make sure that you're aware of what kind of stones your opponent uses because if you put this thing on top of your deck, if you don't have the Darkness Resonators on the field, and then your opponent next turn drops that, um, what is it, uh, Hearth's? 
hearth spire, hearth stone, or whatever it is, the one that Gil Lapis uses, it it removes that card from the game. And it's not the end of the world, but it is ridiculously frustrating. And I almost I almost cried. I legitimately almost cried. This coming from the dude who literally just earlier in this video said, Hey, don't worry guys, it's just a card game. Don't get too crazy. Woo. I don't know why my phone keeps I think it's I think it's because my room's getting a little bit darker here, but that makes sense because the sun is going down and the vampires are coming out. So <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I'm being a little weird. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I don't worry about it. I run three <laughs> I run three of the Transforming Vampire, which is one of the vampires that came out in the Ancient Knights deck, or Ancient Knights set. So it's a 5-4, a, a two-drop, one darkness, one colorless vampire, tribal, you know what I mean, uh, that has the phenomenal ability of whenever this card deals damage, you gain that much life. One thing that I think would have made this deck, or this card, like, significantly better and probably would have made it a three cost or higher is if it either had built-in flying or if it had flying that activated as a result of maybe, like, a resonator dying or you gaining such and such amount of life or something like that, right? Like, uh, like for instance, if they made the ability anytime you gain life from another source other than this card, this card gains flying until the end of turn. That would have been really cool. So, like, I mean, if there's, uh, in the odd case, and this is definitely me floating my own boat here, a little ego trip, to all of you uh, Force of Will executives from, uh, I don't think Italy's important anymore, so sorry Italy, but all of you Force of Will executives from Japan, if you're watching my videos as you regularly do, I'm sure, think of that as a possible ability for a future life-gaining resonator, potentially a vampire, for future sets. Thank you. This card. This is a card with vampires on it. Specifically, one of my favorite promo cards of all time, which is the, the Makage Sisters. Now, I think this is a little bit kind of creepy, just because we've got, like, a very lolly girl and, like, a... I don't know, I don't know. Her, like, floaty's kind of cute, though. Her This lolly and, like, this, like, bikini beside two, like... I guess her older sisters. But, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, like, she's... The usual Japanese excuse, hey, you look 11, but I'm a vampire, so I'm like 500 years old or something silly like that. Anyway, so this is a two drop, one colorless and one darkness resonator. Will of Despair, doesn't matter. Vampire, doesn't matter. 500, 500, wish that was stronger, but it isn't, whatever. That has three tap abilities. Destroy target resonator with 200 or less attack. You, know, you should probably see that. Whoop. There we go. Uh, destroy target resonator with total 200 less attack, which is very doable in this deck. Uh, tap, this card deals 200 damage to your opponent, you gain 200 life. Super useful for keeping you in the game. And tap, a uh, move a 100-100 counter from target resonator to this card. So yeah, actually if, I think they found a really interesting way of melding all three kind of abilities of the three individual um, Makage Sister Resonators into one card. I think it would have been cooler if they took Rinka's ability to, hey, if this card has a 1-1 counter on it, it gains flying. That would have been cool, because unfortunately none of the Resonators in this deck have built-in or acquirable flying without the um, Dreams of Flight, but I guess it's one of the major weaknesses. Here's one of the new cards from the Rhea Vampire deck, the Dark Castle, or Children of the Night, or whatever it is deck. Alucard the Vampiric Noble. He is a Vampire Resonator 6-6 six, six for 3, 2 Darkness, and 1 Colorless. I do not like his stats. I do not like his stats at all. But I do like his ability, his passive ability, which is nice, because it also doesn't get shut down by the Neo Shadow Barrier if it's on the field. Other Vampires you control gain plus 200, plus 200. So when I was making this deck, and this could definitely be put into a... I don't know, a, one of your guys' versions of this deck, if you put it into the sideboard, if you were to play it at your locals or whatever. Um, when I was making this deck, it came down to, do I run Alucard in the deck, or do I run Oni's Castle? Because essentially, they both do the same thing. Um, so this one gives other vampires, it doesn't say Resonator, so it also affects uh, Makage's J-Ruler side, 200-200, whereas the Oni's Castle has a couple of extra nicks and nacks to it. It gives... Um, all of your Darkness J slash Resonators, which, I mean, to, to a Vampire Tribal is the exact same thing, um, plus two, plus two, but it also has the ability of tapping, banishing the card, and grabbing something from Grave. Um, the reason why I chose to put Alucard as opposed to putting Oni's Castle 
and losing the ability to grab something from grave is because I wanted to put more bodies into the deck, right? Like if you have to choose between an addition that does almost the same thing and putting in something that can be used to swing and do that damage to win, I'll choose the resonator every time. So I run two of those. Oh my god, it's getting so dark. You know what, I'm gonna try to finish this deck profile before the vampires come out. Also, it's like winter time, or I guess like a late autumn in Canada, so this wasn't even planned. I actually thought I had enough sunlight to do this comfortably, but I guess I'll rush through this last part. Okay, I run two of these beautiful full arts, by the way. Look at that. Look at that. That's amazing. I'm so happy they did the commons and uncommon um, full arts for Ancient Knights. Anyway, so this is Black Blood Knight. He is a 3-drop 800-800, which I wish that Alucard was. Thanks, Alucard, for 2 darkness and 1 light. Or sorry, one, 2 darkness and 1 colorless. He is a vampire resonator with the following ability. Whenever this card deals damage, you may gain that much life. So, it's not in the purpose of my deck, but another thing you could do for another deck is... Uh, if you decide to run this deck with 3 colors, or even just the 2 and getting rid of white entirely... You could put in red as a substitute or a supplement to the deck, and then run in Dino Rush. And then either doing it with this card or the two drop vampire that has the vampire that has <laughs> the vampire that has the same ability of gaining life whenever it does damage, you could pick off the weenies of your opponent, or specifically with this card, you could use it to have this one deal damage to like Abdul on the field if he's giving you if he's giving you a crap. Um, and on top of that, he's not, he hasn't attacked, so he can still attack your opponent or whatever, but you have gained the 800 damage, the 800 life from doing the 800 damage with Dino Rush, so. Just an idea for another deck if somebody wants to stick to their red-black or make it a red-black-white. Then I run two of Makage Saijiro, Patriarch of the Vampires. So he is also a three-drop, two darkness, and one colorless, eight-eight. Unfortunately, he doesn't have flying, but he does have quick cast, will of despair, we don't care. Vampire, yes we do. Um, and he has the following ability, by the way. Look at that. I don't know if I was a big fan of this promo idea for the inbox promo, but I don't know, I, I like I like the Makage one. He looks so like, mm, hello, ladies. <laughs> anyway, that's kind of creepy. So he's got the following ability. Uh, when this card enters a field, uh, pay any amount of life, J slash resonators, your, and J slash, that's important. Super important. Okay, your opponent controls uh, gain minus 100, minus 0 for each 100 life played this way until the end of turn. So essentially it's kind of like a dinkier version of Final Battle, um, but that works well with his Makagi's Sisters card. But uh, whenever a resonator your opponent controls is put into a graveyard from the field, Put a 1-1 counter on this card. And considering the amount of field control and the amount of like just resonator trashing we have, it uh, it works. It works really well for getting involved. You know what? I'm going to turn on the light. I'm going to turn on the light because it's uh, I'm actually legitimately afraid of vampires. So I'm going to turn it on. Boop. Okay. Uh, it's kind of a shame because I was I was ranting about not having those uh that that light reflection off the cards, and we're literally on like the last few cards, but. Bear with me, ladies and gents. Uh, this is another card that I actually had in my Rhea deck, so it's it's nothing new, but I just anytime that you're running these two colors, I think you should run Erasure, because essentially it's the watered-down version of... of uh, oh my goodness, my brain. My brain, it is the stew of the vampires. Oh man, I should make a, vamp or a zombie deck with how brain-dead I am in comparison to a vampire deck. But guess what, Force of Will? You don't like zombies anymore. You haven't made a good zombie in a long time other than that one dragon dude. But I'm just bitter about that, so I'm going to leave that for another Force of Will rant. It is essentially the Black Moonbeam. It's the new and unimproved version of Black Moonbeam. But it's awesome because unless you're going up against a crazy hand control slash counter card, it helps you get rid of J, J Resonators, right? J Slap. J rulers goodness gracious because it's got um so it's a four cost ancient magic card which i mean in all of my gil Alhamad decks would be important but not in this one particularly for one darkness one light and two of any color and it has the ability to destroy target non-magic stone card that's that's pretty much all you need to know it, d it just doesn't blow up magic stones everything else it's utility for days so i run two of those things and since we have the Faded Reunion and a decent amount of drawing in this deck, getting to them isn't that big of a deal. And the last card slots of the deck, which are also 
two ofs. Okay, so this is Final Battle. Mentioned it earlier. Makage Resonator is a dinkier version of this, but it's also a body, so always choose bodies over cards that do something similar. It is a one darkness and one X drop that has the following ability and does not have quick cast, which also does not butter my biscuits and makes me kind of sad. It has the following ability. You may pay 200 life rather than pay one up to X times to play this card. And paying attention to cer certain details like the 200 life for every one colorless into the casting cost is pretty important because it does make a big difference and I know I've made the mistake in the past and I know that several of my opponents, including Dayman, have made the mistake in the past. So it does make a huge difference to the outcome of matches. So just, you know, be diligent of that. And it has the ability J slash resonates your opponent controls, gain minus X minus X until the end of turn. And it's, it's pretty sick that it's only the opponent as opposed to the entire field. I run two of these as a, a bit of a, I don't know, as an aside for this particular card, guys, don't don't stress too much uh, about holding on to these for some sort of big trump card uh, end of game winning play move thing. Use these things early or mid game if they give you the advantage you need, and then keep pushing that field advantage and win. Because I found that most of the times that I play this card and I actually have a concluding victory in that match is usually when I play it decently early to mid game. I don't think I've ever won in just like one masterful tactical destruction of my opponent in one turn at the end of a game. Because by that point, I usually don't have enough health points to actually plug into this thing to make any meaningful dent on my opponent's super buff mega soldiers. So I run two of those bad boys. Stones, 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 stones. Stones are super basic. Um. Oh, you're there. <laughs> I'm running four of the white black stones, Magic Stone of Heaven's Rift, two from Lapis Cluster, and two from Vingolf 2. So that's four of the ten stones. And this is one of the only decks in recent history that I've made that I've actually kept within that usual nice medium of ten minimum cards. Uh, and then I run six of the basic Darkness Magic Stones. The I mean, every single one of them. This is back back in the day when I used to run just basic stones. I used to love making them of every different color, and I would go to the shop and look at their, like, super cheap stone bin and grab, like, a couple for, like, a quarter or whatever they were. So I run this darkness stone, this one, that one, this one. I really like the art on this one. Uh, and then these two are my favorite. Like, they're so minimalist, and, like, at the same time, it just brings out this, like, beauty in them. So, yeah. I run, yeah, the 10 stones, 4 Heaven's Rift, 6 basic. Guys, this was my Makage Tribal Vampire deck. And I'm really hoping that at least through my videos, you guys are starting to see a little bit more relevance for the beginning of Lapis Cluster starter deck rulers, which I think have been kind of under underrepresented in the last few uh, videos I've been watching or just in the last few tournaments or worlds or whatever. And now that, you know, the ridiculously overused, um, what's his face, Fox, and I mean, I, I'm, I'm expecting to still see a bunch of, uh, of Lumia, because until she gets rotated, I don't think her relevance is really going to go completely out, even without Hook now. Um, but at least Fox and Prissia are going to be at least, I'm hoping, and I've said at least way too many times, so I apologize for that. Classic Canadian Master Fiji apologizing for dumb things, but I'm hoping that they're going to be less represented. That's all I'm trying to say. That's all I'm trying to say. And I'm hoping that things like Nyarlathotep and Makage and hopefully when I make a deck for him, Milium and just decks like that get a second win. So, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I apologize for the ranting. I think I'm actually getting worse. I think my videos are getting longer, so that's, that's a, a big old sorry on my part. But, again videos always come with deck builds in the descriptions which i challenge all of my foul bros and sisters out there who are making videos to do because i've noticed that not enough people do it so it, like it cuts down on people's time if they're in a hurry but uh yeah hope you guys enjoyed see you guys next time do the stuff you have to do and keep loving over there peace